All right, um, in order to work on this little diagram here, what you're going to need is your own copy of the diagram, and then just a list of the things that you need to put on this diagram. So what this is, is a diagram between a mid-ocean ridge and an adjacent subduction zone. Um, so what we have actually here are three different plates. Here's one plate, okay, and then mid-ocean ridges where two plates are pulling apart, a second plate. And then here's a continental plate. So here's the oceanic plate and the continental plate. So one, two, three. Now the very first thing I always do is put in sea level. And you know, you can put it too high and you can put it too low. You gotta be a little careful. Um, what would be too high? You know, these are Andean type volcanoes, kind of like the Cascades, but bigger. So you don't want to put it too high because you know, these could be 20,000 feet high. You just flooded out all of Chile and Peru. Um, the other thing is you don't want the mid-ocean ridge to be protruding up above water because, uh, you know, it does stick up from the sea floor, but it's still at least a mile or more um, below sea level. So it's always good to, to mark sea level. Then typically what I do is I get down in here in the asthenosphere, okay? Now I'll try to go kind of slow, you guys. This is the asthenosphere or asthenosphere, okay? And this is that next layer down, okay? And what happens in the asthenosphere is something called convection. So I'm going to draw my convection cell. And if you remember, convection is where things heat up um, and they rise and they rise because when they heat up, they expand. And when they expand, they become less dense. Now, when things cool and contract, they become more dense and they sink back down. Um, so what's really important though is that you have the up arrow right beneath that mid-ocean ridge. Okay, because that's actually what creates the mid-ocean ridge, an area where heated magma is rising up. Now, the asthenosphere basically has the consistency of toothpaste. It's not a solid and it's not a liquid. It's a semi-solid. We also call it a plastic. So this is all toothpaste. And you guys, toothpaste flows. And this toothpaste flows because it's less dense. It rises up, you know, compared to the other stuff. Now, some of it actually goes straight to liquid. And right here, this is the magma chamber full of liquid magma. Okay, this is toothpaste, that's liquid. Now, this is because of something called decompression melting. Decompression melt, okay? So as this rises up, the overlying pressure is reduced. And actually, pressure and temperature fight one another. Um, that when the overlying pressure is reduced and the temperature stays hot, that actually goes to liquid. Um, when it was under more pressure, it would remain a solid, okay? But because the overlying pressure, as you come up, the overlying pressure is the weight of the rocks and stuff above it, are, is reduced, it actually goes to liquid. And so this will be actually the source of all that basalt that comes out on the sea floor and actually creates um, the sea floor itself. All right. Um, Real quick, you guys, uh, this is a mid-ocean ridge, and the motion on a mid-ocean ridge is plates pulling apart, okay? So plates pulling apart at a mid-ocean ridge. Now, oceanic crust right here is oceanic crust, and that's made out of basalt. And sitting right on top of that, you can see this little bit of stuff here. That's the sediments that start to accumulate. When the mid when the basalt moves off the mid-ocean ridge, um, it starts to accumulate. It's kind of like dust. If you don't dust in your house for a week, well, try and think about not dusting in your house for 10 million years, 100 million years. You're going to actually get a thick layer of sediments that have come down. So that's sitting on top of the oceanic crust, and so we're going to talk about that again. Now, the oceanic lithosphere is the crust plus the upper part of the mantle that is cooled and stuck to the bottom. So oceanic lithosphere. And the lithospheric plates are what's moving over the asthenosphere. Okay, so the lithosphere, you guys, it is the crust plus that upper part of the mantle that's cooled and stuck. And that's acting as a rigid plate. All right, as we move over here, you can see that this plate is moving in that direction. This plate is actually moving in that direction. So that is my um, collision zone. Now right here, I'm going to have my trench, okay, because where the oceanic plate is forced back under is where we're going to have an, an oceanic trench. All right, over here, the oceanic plate's going down. And when the oceanic plate's going down, those sediments, and some of those sediments are waterlogged, right? All the ones up here, they're completely waterlogged. And what that ends up doing is 
um, it ends up putting water in this system. Now right here, this is liquid. All of this stuff is actually liquid. This is this thenosphere again, okay, and that's toothpaste. Okay, why do we get liquid? For a totally different reason, flux melting. Okay, uh, water is the flux, and what a flux is is when you add something um, uh, to a chemical reaction and it happens at a lower temperature. And by adding water, the sediments are melting, and the sediments and part of the asthenosphere are melting. And this material, again, it's rising up because it's less dense, and this is what creates my volcanic arc. Okay, you can call it volcanic arc or you can call it volcano since we're just in 2D here. Now some of that stuff will stall out in here and this is actually what could end up, if this doesn't make it to the surface, could end up cooling um, as granite or granodiorite. So let me just double check. Oh, we got a couple more things. Um, here is the continental crust, okay, and that goes from here to here. And the continental lithosphere is the crust plus the upper part of the mantle um, that has cooled, that's lithosphere, you guys, litho, sorry, sphere. Didn't really split it right either, it should be lithosphere. Um, so it's the crust plus the upper part of the mantle that is cooled and stuck to it. So we've got plates pulling apart here, plates coming together, one, two, three separate plates. Uh, we've got our convection happening here. You don't have to necessarily label it because you've got it here, but this is my convection current. It's what's going on in your pasta pot when you're boiling it. It goes on in the sun and it goes on in the atmosphere and in the asthenosphere. Okay, we've got our trench labeled. We've got, um, see that little kind of messed up area right there? That is actually what's called the accretionary wedge. Now it's not on this test, but boy is that important, that accretionary wedge. I call it the cow catcher, and you guys will be hearing a lot about that cow catcher. In fact, that's how Western North America has grown significantly, is by stuff that we've caught on that leading edge of the continent. Um, that area right through Auburn, which is, uh, so Highway 80 goes up through o Auburn right by Old Town, that is material that was caught on the cow catcher. In fact, quite a bit of Western North America was caught on the cow catcher. So it's part of the accretionary wedge and uh, it's kind of advanced, but we'll talk a little bit about it. If you guys are interested in that, um, John McPhee's, uh, what is it called? Assembling California. Assembling California is a book all about the 80 corridor, especially going right through here through California. It's about the geology and how it got here. All right, this is cool stuff. I like it.